many people don't know the story how I got my first house. I wrecked my car. We, we were looking for a house. We had looked at about 50 some houses. My, my, my wife just didn't seem to be satisfied with nothing we saw. Oh, Lord, help me, God. Help me, Jesus. We had looked at so many houses, I was tired of looking. It didn't seem like we were going to ever find the right house. Then in the middle of looking for the house, you got, you got to create suspense. See, in the middle of looking for the house, a crackhead hits me head on on US 41. I, I, I was on my way to open up the church for somebody and the person hit me. I was like, Jesus, I'm on my way to do your will. So I'm opening the church. So now I got a dilemma. It seems like God is piling on. Because if I sign my name to get a car, it hits my credit. And if it hits my credit, then the bank says, well, we can't give you the house. What, what am I to do? How, how, how is God going to work that out? I mean, everybody in my house got to get to work. You know, like, man, it's real. It's real out here. We were having a 40-day option. And as we were having a 40-day option, we were putting things before the Lord, things that we wanted God to do before the 40 days was up. God challenged me. God said, sow a $1,000 seed. Now, now you got to understand, I don't have $1,000. I have, I have a down payment for my house. I say that again. <laughs> I don't have $1,000. I have the down payment for my house. That money is off limits. God doesn't get that money. God doesn't touch that money because that money has already been set aside for my down payment for my house. Well, when I wrecked my car, it didn't matter then how much money I had for a down payment. Spirit challenged me. Spirit said, give $1,000. I did not want to get that $1,000. Jesus, Jesus. Now y'all sitting here judging you know you're the same way when God talked to you. But I wrecked my car and I said, God, I don't have anything else. See how the story works. You got to build isolation. I don't have anybody else to turn to. My wife got a shoe fetish. She ain't got no money. I, no, see, see, you don't understand. See, see, when you be married, see, honey, honey looks to you. I encourage every husband, listen, if you're going to be married, be a husband, you need yourself some go-to-bed money. Go-to-bed money is money that your wife don't know about. So when she touch you in the middle of the night and say, honey, we need so-and-so, you can say, I got it. Turn back over and go to bed. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you need some go-to-bed money. Because she going to nudge you. And she, and she gonna drop that burden right on your door. Right there. And then she gonna come back to you and say, well, honey, did you, did you, uh, did you think about it? Yeah, I thought about it. I still ain't got it. <laughs> I said, God, I'm gonna commit this seed into your hands. I put the seed in his hands. Normally, when you total out, when they total out your car, it takes a little while for the insurance company to find you, for the insurance company to, to, to get to you. But the insurance company turned right back around, and they cut me a check immediately for my car. So I'm, I'm wondering, Lord, what am I going to do? Because what they didn't cut me still ain't enough to make my car work without getting no payments. I pick up the phone and I call somebody and I say, hey, listen, man, um, I'm wondering if you can just call and help me negotiate to get myself a little used car, get myself something, because 
I only got this amount of money and, and, and I can't, I, 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 I'm probably going to have to go ahead and sign them, get payments. I was already trying to figure out in my mind, I was like, well, actually, I signed to get these payments. We can then, we can move into an apartment. We'll live in an apartment for a year and we'll, we'll, make, we'll make it happen some kind of, some kind of way, some kind of way. Person said, listen, say, son, I'm going to help you because you don't need to have no payments. You got a young family. You got a young family, you got a young wife, and you don't need to have no payments. I say, he, he said, can you just trust me? He said, send me the money that the insurance company sent you, and I'll bless you real good. I sent him the money, and when I sent him the money, he said, I got something for you. And what he sent me was worth more than I sent him and was two years newer than the car I was driving. But we still ain't found no house yet. We still looking. I know the real estate man tired of driving me around. He tired of looking at me. He like, every house I take y'all to, y'all don't like none of the houses I take y'all to. So finally, he takes us into a certain neighborhood, and he takes us to one house. And we go into the house, and once again, the house is horrible. It's a loser. It's a dud. We know we're not getting this house. But as we're on our way into the neighborhood, we pass by a house that has a for sale sign. And when we pass by the house that has a for sale sign, I say, hey, do you mind if, you know, before we leave the neighborhood, can we just stop by and see that house, see that house right there as the, at, the, at the entrance? He said, yeah, that's fine. You know, I, I probably should have a code. It's with the same company that I'm, that I'm with. So as soon as we get out, as soon as we get to the car, we're, 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 we're unpacking my son. We're taking my son out of the car. Everybody's getting out of the car, trucking out the car. And as soon as my son hits the ground, my son starts playing around shouting. So I look at my homeboy that's with me, and I say, hey, listen, man, don't be playing with him. Say, say I didn't do anything to him. I just put him on the ground, and as soon as I put him on the ground, he started doing this. But what I didn't know that day was that my son had a spoiler alert. So we walk into the house, and as soon as we walk into the house, when we walk in the house, everything that we had kind of wanted in the house, because see, see my wife wanted everything done. I wanted a fixer-up project because I watched too much Home and Garden television. Now, now I ain't handy. Now, let's, let's, just, let's just see. That's what my wife know. My wife know I ain't handy. My, my wife know that. She, she, she know that her husband not handy. Uh, I, mean, I, I mean, I barely know how to use a screwdriver real good. So, so my wife knew that a fixer upper wasn't going to never get fixed up. But when we walk in, everything is just the way that it needs to be. Brand new appliances, brand new thing. And it was below the amount that we had been looking for of all the houses that we had been looking at. So I say to the real estate, I say, man, you think, you, think we could, uh, you think we could do this? I said, now listen, God gave me a promise and God said that I could have free parts and labor in this 40-day option. Do you think that we can close before the 40-day option is over? Now, the 40-day option was maybe about 21 days from now. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't a good time. Side note, we ain't have no pre-approval letter. We was looking on faith. We, we, didn't have to, we hadn't even turned our finances into the bank. Bank hadn't even run our credit. We were just look, looking on faith. What was it? And at the time, my wife was nine months pregnant. Why y'all think if... Why y'all think God don't pile on? That, that make the story better. It's just add suspense. My wife about to give birth and we looking around for houses. Some kind of way, the bank is able to take my loan and clear my loan in a record amount of time. They're able to do everything in the time that I need and we end up closing on the house before the 40 day option is over. And when we show up, yeah, it gets so good. When we show up, to the table to close, they give us a check back. Because when you're living through a suspense thriller, you don't know what the end is going to be at the beginning, 
but the author does. The author is always one step ahead. Always one step ahead. 